Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make a directional arrow on your screen so it's always going to point in the direction of a mission objective or any place in the world where you want the player to go and this is just going to help direct them there. So this arrow here is where I want the player to be going to, that's the mission objective. So if I hit play you can see we have an arrow up on the screen once it loads. You see there and it's pointing in the direction we need to go to. So if I look in that direction it's going to be straight on if I continue to look around, it's always going to point in the same direction for where we need to go, no matter where we are. It will always point the correct way for where we need to go. And if I go past it, it should flip around like that because we've gone past. So this is what we're going to make today. And if I were to move it so it's over here, you can see that it is also working as well. So it will then point over there instead. So this is what we make today. It's a nice, cool little feature, just telling the player where they need to go so to help find something. So I'm good in a story based game or anything along the lines really. But yeah, this is what we make today. So let me do this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing I'm going to show you is just this mission objective blueprint I have. All it is, it is simply just a blueprint actor with an arrow in it just so I can see where I want to go and just so I can place it down so that's where the player needs to go to. You don't need to do that, you can just input a direction and a location if you wanted to. But I'm doing this because it's just easier to then get a reference to a position in the real world. So you can place as many of these down as possible and just have this as where you want the player to go. But again, that part is completely optional. I just find it easier to do that. And after this, what we want to do is we want to open up our character blueprint. So for me, that's going to be the content, third person PP, blueprints, and third person character. And what I'm going to do in here is compile that. And I want to get the event begin play. So I'm going to hold down P and left click to get event begin play. And if you've already used it, you can hold down S, left click to get a sequence, connect to that in there then zero into the code you have now, and then one into the code we're about to do. But I don't need that. So what we want to do is we want to get a reference to where this location is. So for me, what I'm gonna do is get actor of class, like so. And the actor class is going to be my mission objective BP there. And again, you'll wanna do this differently however you want to do it. So instead, you may want to go from the mission objective casting to the character, to set this location, or you might want to have get all actors of class, put it into a loop until you find the right one that you want to do, or you can simply just set the location variable, which I'll show in a second. So the return value, I'm going to get actor location, right click that, promote a variable, and I'm going to name this target location. And if we compile that, you can change the default value. So again, what you can do is you can just make this variable and then set its location there, or again, you can open up your mission objective BP, which I have here. And what you can do instead is cast to the character. So for me, that's the third person character, so being get player character. And then as third person character, what you can do is simply just set target location like so. And that way it's easier. And what you can do is the location can just be get actor location like that. But I'm still gonna do it this way, which I have now, but this might be a better way for you especially if you have more than one objective which you want to change between. So again, you choose which way you want to do it. I'm going to close that. And now what we want to do is we have the location of the target, but we want to know where that location is in context of the player's current position. And not only their current position, but where they are currently looking as well. So we want to make sure that it's where they're looking. So I'm going to be doing this off of event tick. So I'm going to right click and get event tick like so. Now you don't want to use event tick too much, but for what we're going to be doing here, it will be perfectly fine. So what I'm going to do is just underneath this, right click and get actor location, like so. The return value will go into a find look at rotation, making sure it was going into the start, like so. And the target is going to be our target location, which we've just made up here. Because we want to find the look at rotation between the player's current location and the target location, so we know where the target is according to the player. So now we have a rotation between the player and the target. So let's say the player is here, the target's here, it will know that this is the lookout rotation. But the player could be here, but they could be looking this way. So we still want to make sure that it is going to be correct, no matter which way the player's looking. So to do that, it's very simple. What I'm gonna do is right click the return value and split the structure pin, because we only want to mess about with the Z value, because that's the axes where we want to be looking and where we are gonna be looking. Not up and down, but left and right. And above this, we're gonna right click and get the control rotation, which is simply just the rotation in which the player is looking in. And we're going to again, right click, split the structure pin. 
Coming out of the Z of the get control rotation, we're going to get a float minus a float, and we're going to minus the other return value Z on the find look at rotation. So we're getting the control rotation on the Z and minusing that from the Z rotation on the look at rotation between the player and the target. And this is going to be the correct value for where we're looking. And so what we're going to do off event tick is then also set a new variable. So I'm going to right click the return value, promote it to a variable, naming this target screen location. So we have the target location in the world. Now we also have the target location on the screen and this is going to be going from 0 to 360 so it's at an angle so if it's right ahead of us it will be 0 if it's right behind us it will be 180 so on and so forth all the way around in a circle between 0 and 360 which is obviously what we want so we compile save that and that's the basic part done of finding out where the target location is going to be in context of the player not only in the world but also on screen so again this is very very simple so now what we want to do is we want to actually add this onto our widget. So we're going to minimize this, right click, go to user interface, create a widget blueprint, and I'm going to name this directional arrow widget like so. You can name this whatever you like. And in here what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an image of my arrow, which I'm just going to drag and drop on here. You can use absolutely anything you like, so it doesn't even have to be an arrow, but I just think an image of an arrow is going to work best for me and look the best and make most sense. And I'm going to place this at the top of the screen. But again, you can place this absolutely wherever you like. This is just where I want it to be, how big I want it to be, and what I want it to look like. So this right here is going to be on screen, with the arrow being up here, and it's just going to be rotating in a circle up there. So again, change that to make it look like whatever you like, but that's going to work well for me. So I'm going to compile and save, and we're going to go over to the graph of this widget. I'm going to delete event pre-construct, and then move construct and tick up here like so because we want to be using these two here. So off of event construct we want to make a reference to our character so we can access this variable that we've just made. So I'm going to cast to my character which for me is the third person character. Object is obviously going to be get player character like so and all I'm going to do is simply right click our third person character promote it to a variable naming this character reference like so so we have a reference to our character to easily access that variable. Now on event tick, what we want to do is we want to rotate that image that we've just made. So what I'm going to do is drag and drop in the image here, get image, and out of this I'm going to set render transform angle. So that's the rotation, that's how you set a rotation of an image in a widget. You set the render transform angle, connecting that in there like so. Then how do we get the angle? Well we've just done that in the character blueprint. So we can get a reference to our character reference here, get character ref. And out of this, we're going to get target screen location, like so. And for me, what I also need to do is I need to invert this because by default, for me anyway, it is inverted. So one is actually facing backwards and 180 is facing forwards. So obviously I don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is drag out this, and get a float multiplied by a float, simply timesing it by minus one. Now you don't have to do that. I'd make sure to just double check with you because it's like that for me might not be for you so just make sure that you double check and if it is wrong just either times it by minus one or times it by one or don't times it by anything just again it will either be minus one or one so i'm going to compile save and that should now work so again in the character blueprint we're going to be finding the correct rotation from the camera's current facing rotation and where the target currently is in the world and then we're simply going to be just making sure that that angle is what the rotation of the arrow is set at so it looks like it's always going to be facing the arrow. Also I should mention to make this work the arrow does need to be pointing up straight up by default like this so it's pointing straight forwards by default otherwise it won't work. So I'm going to hit play and we can test this out although one major thing I forgot is we need to add this widget onto the screen so we can go back to the third person character on event begin play again I'm simply going to create widget like so. The class is going to be my directional arrow widget and the return value will be add to viewport like so. Hit play and now you can see we have the arrow on screen pointing the direction of where this mission objective is. If I look at it it's going to be straight forward, so I look away it's always going to be facing the correct location for wherever it is no matter where we go. So let's try and find it but just by simply following this arrow you can see it's straight ahead over here. If I go past it it's going to flip around like that. So this works perfectly. And what I can do again 
is just move this to be somewhere else. So again, I'll put it back in this corner over here, hit play, and it's pointing in the right direction once again. And we can go find it based on which direction this arrow is pointing in, like so. So this works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for the video, as we've done everything we want to do, we've set up this directional arrow, which is always going to point in the correct direction of our mission objective, which we have, and it's going to be pointing at it on screen so the player doesn't get lost, and they always know where to go, and again, I think this is a nice, really cool little feature to add into your game. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.